what is Islam? Um, what are the sources of Islam? What are the sources of Islam? What is Islam? Hello, I would like to talk about lies. Um, what should we call it? The lie industry, lie manufacturing. We are addicted with lies. Since childhood, when we are babies, we are read lies, it's called stories. The bigger lies, the better. Like uh, uh, Snow White, correct? Beauty and Beast, many others. And then we watch movies, mostly our lies. Even the ones that inspired by true stories, well, there are some true stories in every movie you can find, but the most interesting parts are fabrication and lies. And we grew up as the ones who are raised with the songs, usually acting, people who kind of <laughs> change their voice and stuff, correct? And movies and fiction. The most sold and read books are fiction books. And then you grow up, you go to church, mosque, synagogue, temple, whatever. And then you see they sell the lie, lies and holy lies. The bigger lies, the better lies. Measure. Imagine. The guy is worshipping the murder weapon. That's fine. That's, there's a mystery there. Murder weapon. Cross. <laughs> and he insults your brain. Your logic board. Destroys it by saying Trinity. God at the same time is a human being. The creator... At the same time is created, but the created is at the same time is not created, is God. God is eternal, this one human is not eternal, but eternal and non-eternal at the same time. God is omnipotent, but this poor asking help from God, but they are the same. One plus one plus one equals one. This is the summary of the Nicene Conference. And you will see, they will sip wine and they will call it, this is the blood of our Savior. Can you imagine a better light than this? <laughs> Your Savior, you love him and you drink his blood and it's not really blood, it is wine. Pretentious cannibalism. In fact, they seriously argued this, religiously, sent each other to hell. Church, they call it consubstantiation or insubstantiation, I forgot even the name. Whether really this wine, not only metaphorically, whether it's really literally turns into the blood of Jesus. While you are getting a sip. And that cookie, that, that guy who has very interesting garb, separating himself from you through fabric, through fashion, giving and sometimes make a sm smoke, holy smoke. 
And that guy says, well, this is the flesh or of our savior. Interesting. These are all made up, has nothing to do with Jesus, by the way. Trinity even did not exist for 325 years. In Nicene Conference, they coined. You cannot find the word Trinity, which is the basis of today's Christianity, Pauline Christianity. You don't find in the Old Testament, thousands of pages, neither in any Gospels in the New Testament. Anyway, this is the flesh of your Savior, and you eat the flesh, pretentious cannibals. And you believe those lies, you must be very, you might be a very smart person. Even you got a master or doctorate degree from sciences, but when you go to church or go to the mosque, you leave most important part of your brain, frontal lobe, by the door. Go to the mosque, and then if so many things. <laughs> Talking about the miracles of Muhammad and stuff. Oh my gosh, contradictions. Let's say you go to Hajj. You are a smart person. You are educated. You say a monotheist. But over there, you will go stampede, step on each other to kiss a black stone. Holy black stone. It's not God, but what are you doing? You are worshipping it. And then you go circumambulate, rotate seven times around a building, stone made of rocks. The purpose of that building? Originally, people made it to protect themselves from environment, from the sun. They put some uh, whatever leaves on top of it, dry things. That's it. From dust storm to protect them. From cold and heat. It was building. They didn't worship the stone of the building. They used it. After that, you cover it, the stone, with silk, black silk. Millions of dollars spent on it. And after kissing that black stone, you rotate seven times around a stone, a building made of stone. And then you get stones in your hand. You go stone two, three erected stones, pretending that those stones, vertical ones, are Satan. Think. This is the craziest, the most stupid idea. Especially, and they call themselves monotheists. By this way, Sunni, Shiite, Catholics, Protestants have nothing to do with monotheism. They betrayed the rational monotheism, the message of Jesus, Muhammad, and Moses. Absolutely. They are the enemies, in fact. If today Muhammad and Jesus come, these people will stone them to death or call Jesus as Antichrist. Absolutely. I have argued in my book, 19 Questions for Christians. It was published in Turkey, in English and Turkish on both sides of the book. I should publish it in Amazon here too. And also 19 questions for Muslim scholars or Manifesto for Islamic Reform. Check those books. They're PDF available for free. I'm not making money from my books, religious books. Absolutely. Since 1986, when I converted from Sunni religion to Islam means peacemaking. Okay, come back to the lion does. And then in churches and mosques and temples, you learn about holy lies and a very important protected part of your brain is filled with those viruses, Trojan horses. Some of them really blew up your logic board's fuses that damages your whole behavior in life, turn you to a zombie, opium of masses. And then you listen to politicians, the biggest liars, get the most votes. Therefore, as a society, we are, since childhood, we are addicted with lies and lies and lies. Even advertisement business, the bigger lies, the bigger customers. For example, a car. In advertisement, they put a beautiful girl next to the car. What has to do? If that... Not a beautiful girl, it's a mechanic, ugly, dirty mechanic, but understand from cars. It will be relevant, logical reasons. Okay, this mechanic is a very good mechanic. 
for 20, 30 years, fixed cars, and now he is testifying that this car is one of the best, or is the best, okay? It makes sense, but they don't do that. They bring someone who has no idea about cars, who's not authority, false authority, but beautiful one, you see, since there is a beautiful woman there, or a handsome guy there, therefore this car, this guy, this car must be also beautiful and handsome and great. But these logical fallacies, falsehood, lies, is used everywhere, propaganda. Those people who you elect to use to spend your tax money properly for the roads, for education, for good things, but you, they start waving flags and waving holy books in order to, do, to distract you from what they are doing, stealing your money or leading you to a war which is not justified. You can go to war only for self-defense. But you claim to be a good guy. You say love your enemies in churches. In mosques you say peace, salam and stuff. But whenever a flag is waved, especially when a holy book waved next to it, under it, stuff, and you are a barbarian, bloodthirsty warmonger. You want bigger military, more wars. You don't even question the politicians. You don't scrutinize what they lead you for war. But when it comes to peace, you are very skeptical. And you call yourself Christian, Muslim, which is Christian is made up name. Neither Jesus used or neither his supporters. They said Nasara, Nasari, monotheist. And Nasara means the supporters of the truth. Nasara, Nasarin, supporters, supporters of truth, stand for justice. And Muslim, the meaning of it they distorted, means peacemaker, but no, they are more mongers, unfortunately. Anyway, I'm very critical of religions and this politician nationalism. It is what divides us. We are all children of Adam, or children of the first homo sapien, but true lies especially holy lies, national lies. We are turned to enemies against each other and they are making big money out of that. The military industrial complex, corporations, the corrupt banking system. And look at this, like there are three people in the United States, uh, Bill Gates, Will Buffett, and then Bezos, Amazon's Bezos, these three of them, they own more wealth than half of the American people. This is a travesty, obviously. This is incredible shame. How can you accept this? Half of Americans are that stupid, only three people can make more money. There's something wrong in the system, but you are not questioning because you are brainwashed through media and through their system. Even their games fake, promote this injustice. Like the survivor, only one person wins. Like lottery, one person wins, millions of people lose. They brainwash you. They say, um, a Turkish word enter because of this. And anyway, uh, uh, my battery is, uh, I'm going to lose my battery. I wanted to talk about more lies, the lie industry. Yes, lies are everywhere. Since childhood, we are raised with lies, with stories ridiculous stories, and then we read fiction books, stories, lies, movies, crazy lies, lies inside lies, and of course a lot of violence and stupidity, uh, a lot of bad habits are promoted through movies, when you are subjected so much to torture, to killing, to sex, to alcohol, drugs, lies, all evil things, you unfortunately become insensitive. They have effect. And um, then uh, holy lies, correct? Churches, mosques, and synagogues, temples, the biggest lies, the better. <laughs> you don't use your mind when you go to those places somehow. They tell you, nope, you're not reason, faith. Faith is euphemism for what? for following the crowd or 
the bandwagon, the closest bandwagon or the flashiest bandwagon, the crowdest bandwagon, it is a bandwagon, it is a euphemism really to follow the crowd around you for certain psychological, sometimes social, sometimes economic, sometimes political ends, not search for truth. People in church, from the priest to the congregation, in mosques, in temples, they don't search for truth. They don't care about truth. In fact, it is the places where truth is massacred, is sacrificed. They are the enemies of truth. Organized religions. And religions, any religion that has dogmas, means you believe it without questioning, there is evil there. It is falsehood. It cannot withstand questioning. It, it cannot withstand light. Therefore, they say, you must hold this deer in darkness. Never, never expose it to the light. Because what you are holding in your hand is as ugly as a cockroach or a dust mite. But do you think it is a cute pet? <laughs> well, in fact, my, my, my analogy, in fact, is very generous analogy. It is much, much worse than that. It is a virus that turned very good people to barbarians, to killers, to oppressors of women, to killer of brothers, to liars. Look at church in medieval times when they had power, when they get power. You see their real face. I have a book here on torture machine manufactured by priests who said, love, love your enemy. And meanwhile, love your enemy, imagine. And forgot they were the enemy, their friend, their neighbors, they tortured. Tyndall, they burned him, they burned him alive. For what? Translate in the Bible. Witch hunt. Inquisition. Now they don't have the power, but they get the power exactly the same evil. The same with the Sunnis, the same with Shiites, the same with the monks. What you thought? You thought they were nice people. I told you, don't be deceived by their look. They have the same virus. Oh, they are peacefully deep. They never kill. Nope. And you find out. In Thailand, what happened? Was it Thailand? Myanmar? Yeah, Myanmar, I think. They killed about tens of thousands of Muslims, Sunnis, led by monks, Buddhist monks. They were the leader of gangs, killing, massacring, chopping heads. And many of them escaped to Bangladesh. It's just we saw, but it's not a surprise for me. Like, an American astrophysicist says there are good people and bad people, and it, take, it takes religion to turn a good person to a bad person. I would like to modify it. Instead of religion, add it ideology. Because you know Stalin killed millions, Pol Pot killed millions, they were atheists. Mao killed millions, correct? Hitler was semi-Christian, semi-atheist, maybe fully atheist, he killed millions. And Bush made up lies, big Dick Cheney, they were newborn Christians, they made up lies, they invaded Iraq, war in Iraq, shock and awe means terrorism, they bombed the whole city, and we were watched as if it is firework, fun. But they were killed, people were dying, children were dying. People were losing their limbs, suffering greatly. And one million people were killed there. Based on what? Religion. It was a religious war. Religion and nationalism because the church supported. Evangelical church supported Bush. He was a newborn Christian. And Saddam, who is Saddam? Supported by Dick Cheney. Ram, what is called? Uh, not Dick Cheney, the other guy. I'm sorry. I forgot his name. The other third guy, there were three criminals. They were not tried. Rumsfeld. Rumsfeld was shaking hand with Saddam Hussein when he was massacring Kurdish people, when he was committing genocide against Kurdish people. In Halabche, gassed them to death, 5,000 of them, children, men, and women. And those chemical weapons were given by the United States and United Kingdom. 
and United States encouraged him to attack, wage war against Iran. And meanwhile, one or two million people killed on both sides. And then afterwards, using him as United States stooge there, and then later United States turned against him. Oh, he's a dictator. He's a tyrant. Well, thank to you. You were the one created this monster, supported him all the time when he was killing his own people, killing Kurdish people, attacking Iran. And then suddenly he became bad and you are still good. <laughs> oh my God. Yes, he was a bad guy, but he was your monster. You wanted to change the strategy there and create other monsters, ISIS. ISIS is byproduct, your torture. Anyway, but you see in the United States, in everywhere, the religious people are the worst people because they are intoxicated by lies and lies, the worst lies, holy lies they have swallowed so much. And political lies next. Holy lies are the worst lies that the, sh the, the best person, you insert that virus, that person is dangerous to people. Dangerous. For example, there was a cult in Turkey, a Fethullah Gülen cult. Tayyip Erdogan, my former friend, and uh, er, um, Fethullah Gülen, I know from my family, he was my father's student. My father was the top clergyman in Turkey. And I was t together with Tayyip Erdogan in Turkey. He was my classmate, uh, not classmate, schoolmate, and later in the party, I was the leader of the uh, Islamist youth organization in Turkey, and he was also leader of the party's uh, youth organization. We were together in the same region, and then, but thank God, in 1986, I parted my way. I rejected the Sunni religion. Now, this uh, Fethullah cult, they call it Hizmet, Jama'at, whatever the name. They, it, it is supported by the U.S., unfortunately. It was the richest cult, millions of dollars. Big, uh, but later, they felt um, this uh, cult leader, Fethullah Gülen and Tayyip Erdogan, for... 11 years, they did all kind of um, crimes together, committed crimes. They stole many natural resources. They uh, corrupt, they created corruption. They even stole um, test questions and answers in order to insert cult members into the university's top places, military. And they did all kind of corruptions. For example, contract, government contract, they shared among themselves and later they felt proud. But that time, the cult members, usually very nice people, well-educated, very good people, and the member of the cult and the most educated part, because the government encouraged people to go to the cult schools and um, uh, educational, whatever services they would have or their dormitories. And uh, therefore, many, many smartest, most gifted students were led towards the cult, and later they fell apart. I expected that. Years ahead of time, I said, these people don't look at them, they are in peace. In fact, they are together because of what they are, because of the corruption. They are plundering the resources of the country together. They are liars. And I said they would fall apart, and these cult members, these cult don't look at them, they are very peaceful. They look peaceful, but they have the virus. And one day will come, they will commit atrocities, and which they did. And therefore, religious lies, political lies, and there are also commercial lies. For example, I'll give you an example. Uh, where am I looking, huh? Good. Here. Um, for example, I have this one. I carry these USB um, on my neck for years, maybe 20 years, something like that, maybe since 2000, I think more than 20 years. When it first came, I was so excited because I had those cartridges carrying me. This is the backup of my books and uh, my writings, articles, my pictures, and so many other things, music, and some of the videos. Of course, they don't fit here. This is 256 gigabyte. Uh, I have more than a thousand uh, videos, HD videos, uh, Turkish and English on YouTube, therefore they don't fit here. But I carry important things here as a third backup. And they question, what do you have here? 
Well, this is a functional, useful stuff. And if I go to your computer, I sometimes access this to my work. And also, it is a backup. If my home is burned or someone steals my computer, I don't need to worry. But they ask this one. But if I had a piece of fabric, useless piece of fabric hanging here, which is called tie, they don't ask. We don't ask this question. Why you are carrying that piece of cloth, useless cloth here? And sometimes you pay a lot of money to that, correct? Because of the lies. And everyone does it, it becomes normal. <laughs> the most stupid things, when many people start doing it, it becomes normal. Think about ironing the pants. Before, the guy, the cunning, manipulating guy, appeared with iron in his hand. It was okay. It looks really beautiful. Like pants, like tube, cylinder, beautiful. But this guy came, but he was cunning. Hmm. He came up, he put a vertical line on pants. And perhaps that wouldn't be enough for him to promote that line, a lie. But perhaps he found some handsome, beautiful, not handsome man, maybe rich. He says, hey, you're rich and you're handsome. You have prestige in the society. Let's promote this silly, stupid idea that if there is vertical one line on each side of the pants, then it is beautiful. You are beautiful, you are handsome, and you are rich. Wear this one. Let's go. Let's people see this. And people initially saw it. Well, this is strange. But this handsome, this young, this rich, these smart persons, they are wearing this. And then few people, they start mocking. Not mocking, means imitating. There are a lot of those kind of people you will find. Say any stupid thing and say, follow me, and you will find in the crowd, there will some people follow you. The most stupid thing say, claim something, and say, follow me. <laughs> you will find 100 people, five, six people you will find, and then if you are good enough, if you create a good propaganda and some gimmicks and some stuff, and wear funny clothes and hats, and say something they don't understand in Arabic, Hebrew, or any stupid, like, I'm sorry, uh, no language is stupid. Uh, can, yani, any, any nonsense make up and people will be more following you. Sometimes it takes a good propaganda. If a cult has a good propaganda guy next to you who create lies about you, about your things, oh, 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 you can get millions of people, followers. I know some people how from zero they started just because they by chance, whatever, they got good Gobbles, religious ones, next to them. Anyway, a few people start putting lines and the others start imitating. Boom, here it is. Now, it must be one line. What about two lines, three lines? No. Well, that is the fashion. Once I questioned why I was in Turkish prison for my political writings, I was driving people crazy by asking questions. Of course, my classmates, not classmates, they are... My prison is not very well educated or not the smartest people on earth. And sometimes <laughs> they would go crazy. Uh, I remember we had uniforms, of course, no uh, iron. For, do you imagine for iron, you pay money to get iron, use electricity, sometimes burn your stuff, burn house, to put that useless, stupid line, vertical line. If the initial guy who made this, if he put it, the lines horizontal, that would be the fashion, that would be beautiful in our, to our eyes. By the way, the idea of beauty is interesting. It is basically, the more we see something, it, our brain creates the average of that. Faces, the beautiful face in our ideal, in our mind, is the f average of all the faces we have seen. It explains why there is some kind of more universal, features that we think, we all think is beautiful, and also it explains a little bit diversion from that depending on the culture, because geography, have they, they are exposed to different faces. Therefore, if you are raised in a black neighborhood, your sense of your average beauty is a little bit different. Beauty is really average means. And the study uh, done in um, Texas University about uh, 30 years ago, now 25 some years ago, 
That was a fascinating study because the millennial long uh, question about aesthetics they answered through the computer. They scanned about 64 pictures of college girls' faces to the computer and they asked the computer to make a composite picture. Take the mathematical geometric average of the faces, create an average picture and ask college boys which one of these pictures is the most beautiful physical attraction. And most of the college boys picked the computer generated average face. Anyway, I was talking about the idea of beauty and stuff. It is influence. We are influenced by what we see. Therefore, as I said, iron, if you see people with iron pants, and uh, a better pants cylinder will look ugly. I remember when I was a kid, that time we call it Espanol Pacha, Spanish Pacha. Pacha means the end of the lower end of the pant. It was so wide, and that was fashion, and the narrow one looked so ugly. And later that lost fashion, and then the other one looked ugly. Hmm. We are influenced. Therefore, don't be influenced, manipulated by these fashion people, by religious men, by politicians. Be smart. Don't think. Stay away. Especially, especially if they are religious clergymen, especially if they have different clothes and hats. And be very careful because they are spewing viruses all around. They are playing with your mind if you are sleepy, if you allow yourself to be relaxed, they will enter. And politicians, beware of them. And beware of me too. Be careful. Go back, listen again. Be critical. If I say something doesn't make sense, question. I know that, that you are more critical of me than the guy who is fooling you, cheating you, selling you the biggest lies. It's interesting. I tell people, use your reasoning. Two times two is four. The earth is round. They are skeptical of my words. But they go, they, without any question, they listen to the most stupid stories and ideas. Like, stoning to death, there was a verse, yeah. Well, you say it's not in the Quran, stoning to death, call it Rajah. Well, stoning to death was a verse. A shaykhu wa shaykhu tu iza zanaya farjumuhuma al battata, yeah. And it was written on a leather, it was under Aisha's bed. After Muhammad's death, a hungry goat went and ate that skin, which was the verse of the stoning to death was on it. The, word, the, the verse that commanding Muslims to kill people in barbaric ways, stoning them to death. Eh? You said this is really a stupid story. The most stupid story I heard so far. And you also <laughs> slandered and falsely accused the goat for doing such a thing. But, and also after Prophet Muhammad somehow, it is mensuh, means nesakha, means abrogated from the Quran. Well, it says, well, it is literally abrogated, but its hukum means its judgment stays forever. Means as a verse, it doesn't exist because God ate it. But it is hukum, means the judgment, the rule, the law is there. Therefore, if someone does the fornication, whatever, adultery, will kill. And usually they kill women. It's incredible. And this guy believes that. And but the question, my most reasonable statement. Hello, don't be stupid. Don't follow a clergyman, don't worship a clergyman, don't go kiss his hands and legs, don't give your money to these people, don't buy this uh, coffin which is supposed to will protect you from the torture of the grave. Jubeli Ahmed, Turkish uh, clergyman who has millions of people following him, he was selling coffin that supposedly he blew on it, holy blow, and it protects people from what? From torture of graveyard. While you are dead, supposedly there will be torture, and most of this torture, according to them, is from urine. You go to the bathroom, you come out, there is a little, little molecules of urine in your underwear. That is the cause of the biggest torture, according to Sunni religion. They created these biggest lies, stupid lies. 
And then people are scared. <laughs> you listen. And they have description of these tortures. And then how you are saved? Well, this clergyman, Jubbeli Ahmed, look at him. He's the biggest liar and charlatan, like the clergyman, like the priest in the United States, evangelical, evangelical. And says, well, I have a solution. <laughs> I have a coffin. But this is five times, ten times more expensive because I blew some prayers on it and it will protect your dead from the torture of the grave. And he sells other stuff, many. From the carton, he drives the most stupid shape. Supposedly, it is the shape of Prophet Muhammad's shoe. And then this is good for all these things. Oh, it saves you from many troubles. If you have that shoe, you must be the most prosperous nation on earth. Somehow, the <laughs> Muslim world, because they betray the most their mind and the Quran, they are the most backward people on earth. And they follow these people, they give their money to them. And their life is miserable. Fam from family life to work life and everything. Miserable, hungry, sick, stupid. But this is it. And therefore, stay away from religious, uh, organized religions, especially from professional religious people, stay away. Critically think. Imagine a food. Before eating the food, we smell it, we see the color. Some of things happen automatically, but our brain does all these testing. The color, the smell, and then the taste. Listen, three stations, identity check whether this poisons or not. And then goes to even stomach, the ultimate one may throw up. And alcohol, the mo one of the most toxic one, the evil one can go even to the brain, unfortunately. And it is, its harm is underrated. Uh, unfortunately, is underreported. Anyway, we are careful about food, but when something we put in our brain, especially when it is introduced to us, camouflage as a holy lie, as a holy truth, we don't even question. Just swallow. Since childhood, we are basically we got used to. Imagine the Sunni make fun of Christians, the Christian make of Sunni, the Hindu makes fun of the, both of them, both of them makes fun of the Hindus. Hello? Look at yourself. You are no better than that. If Hindu is stupid, their religion, so many gods and worshiping the monkey and the donkey and the cows, washing themselves in the Gange, the dirt is polluted while it's filth. Basically, fecus there. You see it. And they go wash themselves in that sewage. In the sewage. And they clean, cleanse themselves, supposedly. But from the Christian's point of view, yeah, it is really stupid and dirty and ugly. But they don't see it themselves. And Christians do not see it themselves. A moment ago, I gave you the example of worshiping the murder weapon, the cross, and many, many other, like, Drinking wine, pretending that it is the blood of Jesus, correct? Eating cookie, pretending that it is the flesh of your savior, pretentious cannibals, and you go to heaven because of these stupid things you're doing. The same with the Muslims. They worship Muhammad. Despite the Quranic verses which Muhammad followed, they put name of Muhammad anywhere they see the name of God, which is against the Quran. In about 29 verses, La ilaha illallah, there is no God, only God. Nowhere we find Muhammad's name, but later they added. The same with Christianity. Jesus never said, I am God or son of God, literally. You are children of God. I am one with God, you be one with God. Means the truth. Let's go worship. Not the word worship, even there is a problem. Serve God. God is just. Let's do justice. God is love. Let's have love. God is peace. Salam, let's establish peace. God is the truth. Let's search the truth. Let's serve the truth. Commemoration of God, exalting God, is not just word. It is a matter of concept, universe values. God is the collection of all the universal values, the truth, justice, love, peace, wisdom, al-hikmah, hakim. 
And therefore, when you serve God, you are the freest person, and you ultimately, you are trying to reach perfection. You will never be able to attain, but your goal is that. Therefore, you are not manipulated by evil people because you are not, you serve God alone. That is monotheism. Monotheism is ultimate freedom and ultimate service to the truth and justice and bravery. But Christianity is an idol worship and religion. Sunni, Shiite, all of them. Unfortunately, after messengers, the clergymen who fought against those messengers, they hijack the religion. They start in the name of the messenger, fabricating lies like St. Paul and later afterwards church. Today's Christianity has nothing to do with Jesus. Jesus was not a capitalist war monger. Was not. Was not making money from religion, but these religious people, they all make money living out of religion. The same with Muhammad. Jesus glorified God. When they called him good teacher, he said, don't call me good teacher. God is only good. This was that kind of guy. He prayed to God. But he made God out of him. But they couldn't say plural gods. They split God into three pieces. Look at evil. <laughs> Find a way. Loophole. And schizophrenic God. The same with Muslims. They don't call Muhammad God, but even in their religion is bigger than God. Muhammad's words can abrogate the verses of the Quran. When you say God, they don't really care. When you say Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they make noises and all sorts of things. They praise Muhammad more than God. And they never say God alone. La ishadu illallah. I testify there is only one God. They always have to add Muhammad because God is not sufficient without Muhammad. According to Quran, Muhammad says, from Muhammad's own word, God says, from his own mouth, the Quran says, tell them, O Muhammad, قُلْ say, إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرُ مِسْلُكُمْ I am only a human being like you. But you see, what happened? Muhammad is no human. Their anger towards those people who are drawing the picture or the cartoon of Muhammad is not because they are against idol worshippers, they are biggest idol worshippers. It is because they know that if Muhammad is depicted like a human being, the charisma, the the lies they created about to make him a deity, it will be basically eliminated. People say, oh, he was a human being like us. They don't want him to be perceived like a human being like us. And besides, trying to kill those people or threaten their lives is absolutely against the Quran. The Quran says, chapter 440, verse 140, if people are making mockery of your religion while you are discussing with them, uh, leave their presence until they come to their senses. They stop mockery, but they are engaging in a reasoned discussion. That's the verse of the Quran. It doesn't say, yell at them, bite them, beat them, kill them. No. Just the other way around. They are making mockery. They are not in the mode of philosophical conversation, discussion. Leave them. Peace, say peace. The Quran many times says peace. And go back again when they come to their senses, when they start continuing. That's it. But you see what happened. Please read Manifesto for Islamic Reform. It is available for free on my website. You can download it. You can order if you wish. I don't make money from my books on religion. And also Quran and Reformist translation. And read it and uh, share this message. And also very important, 19, God's signature in nature and scripture. Let me uh, show you the book here. Okay, well, this is a bad. Okay, I want to show you this book. This is a very important book. I know that uh, idol worshippers, Sunnis and Shiites and Christians, Catholic, they very hate this number. They, are, they made up a lot of lies about this. Therefore, please, for yourself, Without prejudice, try to study it, to read it. And of course, this is my arguments with them. Um, Carl Sagan, I had a debate with him. He doesn't really fit zebras. Uh, he was the very honorable skeptic, with the exception. The rest of it were zebras. They deserve that. And um, here it is. You may stop, uh, push the space bar, stop, and read this summary. This is incredible stuff. This is a prophetic stuff prophetic 
And also the same code is discovered in the Bible by Rabbi Judah, 11th century. We need to translate that one. It has nothing to do with numerology or Bible code. And uh, I had many other rules, and this one too, it is discussion on uh, Quran with uh, warmongers like Robert Spencer, Bill Ayer, and those people. Okay, I know that uh, this came. Oh, this reformist translation. Quran a reformist translation. I am perhaps the only one in history translated the Quran into two languages, Turkish and English. This is my Turkish translation. This is the first in, uh, basically had about 1620 print. This is the first print in Arabic. Now let me see if chapter nine. Haha, <laughs> I want to show you. This is the end of chapter nine. Aha. Uh -huh. If you don't know it, no problem. You will learn why I showed you that one. And uh, I have uh, this Turkish book. Um, this one is, uh, hopefully it will be translated. I, I, I wrote, uh, I write some of my books in English originally, then I don't have time to translate it. Some other people translate it. And uh, it, sometimes it loses its things. I hope that's, I, I don't have patience to, to write this one in English, therefore uh, I'm going to find someone who will be able to translate it with its style, because I have style, it's beautiful style discussion. And this is a powerful book against atheists. Uh, half of it philosophical, the other half theological defense of the Quran against Sunni Shiite distortions and atheists who believe those distortions and using those distortions and other lies criticizing the Quran, which is not justified. Anyway, uh, be careful about lies. That's okay. The, ch the childhood stories, if you write now, but it primes your mind for lies. They, they may not be that harmful or fiction and movies. Be careful, but especially be very careful about holy lies. When any word stated to you in the name of God, say, what is your proof? Proof, not ordinary, extraordinary proof. I want to finish this one with a little anecdote story, real story from my life. When uh, my older son Yahya was child, five years old, I have, uh, in fact, uh, the journal. Exactly the date is written there. In fact, on 19.org, you will see that journal. And um, uh, we, me and my wife, we decided to pray. He was getting ready to go out. He saw us by the gate. He saw us. We are praying. He wanted to came. He came, joined us. And then my wife saw him. He said, Yahya, take your shoes off. We are praying on the carpet. At home, we take our shoes off, in fact. And then Yahya said, why? Beautiful, the most important word that you need to teach your kid. Why? And then my wife said, because God says so. And my son said, well, I didn't hear God says so. Oh my gosh, my wife got upset with that. I was so happy. I said, my son, until you yourself hear God says so, keep your shoes on. I raised my kids questioning, and I myself still questioning. I don't have answers for many of the things, but I'm convinced 100% that the Quran is word of God, that the Bible is word of God, that Jesus, Muhammad, Moses, Socrates, and many other messengers of God came, like Buddha also, I give big chance that he was messenger of God. I see the same pattern, how they distort the message, but I read some of the things that is attributed to him, it makes very sense, he's a very skeptical guy. And uh, therefore, uh, those messengers, they promoted oneness of God, only Submit yourself, serve God alone. God is the creator of the universe and us. God is knower of everything, the source of knowledge, the source of truth, the source of love, the source of justice and peace. Therefore, establish these. Don't hurt people, don't cheat people. You, children of Adam, you are all brothers and sisters. Stay away from racism, stay away from sexism. Men and women, they are equal to each other and all these things. But later, 
the clergymen are the biggest enemy of God and truth. They come, they distort. And therefore, uh, uh, stand also for peace. Unfortunately, the wars are the biggest, biggest uh, tragedy in human history. Look at the last century, how many millions of people killed, how many millions of children killed, orphaned, maimed, tortured. And we justify this. Why? Because when the flag is waved, we go crazy, we go stupid. Therefore, transcend national borders and religious borders and colors, and let's unite our voice. We need to work 10 times harder than warmongers to establish peace. We need to unite our voices because our governments are hijacked by the multinational corporations who make bloody money out of wars and conflict and imperialism. And please uh, uh, watch my speech at European Parliament, at British Parliament. Both speeches are very important. And also my recent um, discussion, uh, not discussion, interview, George Galloway. I was in London, George Galloway, the MPs of uh, Labour Party politician. It was a short interview, but listen to that interview. Edip Yüksel, George Galloway, and Edip Yüksel's speech at European Parliament, especially the last minute is a separate video. Listen to that and ponder on that. And also my speech at uh, British Parliament is about the military-industrial complex. And also my speech, not my interview at Rudow on ISIS, that ISIS is the same thing. And though I'm the most harshest critic of the so-called Muslims, which they are not Muslims, they are Sunni and Shiites, but I am against war, against Islamophobia, against hatred. Some people who are critical of them, they, they ignore the Western aggression, the military occupation and wars and crimes. They want even more wars in those countries. In fact, ISIS is the byproduct of the atrocities committed by the United States in Iraq. Of course, the religion is out there. Their religion has those teachings, but they were like inactive viruses. Look at the Old Testament. Rabbis fabricated so many barbaric laws, rules, but Jewish people, it's not active. They are not practicing that. They're doing some other evil stuff. Some of the Jews who are very bad got uh, distorted their mind, but it is... Therefore, stay away from uh, dogmas and political ideologies. Be very careful dealing with them. Thank you very much. Peace.